36 hours prior to outbreak. I said, can you see me? The freckled redhead on my laptop screen said, yep. Amy Sullivan had her hair in pigtails, which I like, and was wearing a huge ironic t-shirt with a badly drawn eagle and an American flag on it, which I hate. It was like a tent on her. She asked, how'd your therapy go? Jesus, Amy, you don't start a conversation with your boyfriend asking him how his court-ordered therapy went. You have to ease into that. Ah, sorry. It's a sensitive subject. Okay, forget it. I said, are you coming home for Thanksgiving? Yep, you miss me, don't you? You know I can't function on my own. After a beat and another sip of tea, she said, are you going to be all right? Not just with the therapy, but that whole situation? Your uh, roommate isn't around, right? No? Okay. Yeah, it's fine. Everything is quiet. She said, that scared me that night. I know it did. Nothing had happened like that for a long time, I know. If something like that happens again, I'll shoot it with a crossbow again. I told you that. Did you talk to your therapist about that? Subtle, Amy. Well, I'm curious. How did I find a girl who's worse at conversation than I am? She took a sip from a teacup she pulled off camera. She had to balance the cup with her left wrist. That is, the stump where her left hand should be. She was in a car accident when she was a teenager before I knew her. The crash took her hand and her parents and left her with chronic back pain and an implanted titanium rod in her spine. She refused to get a prosthetic hand because she thought they were creepy, but in my mind, between the titanium spine and a robot hand, she'd be like 10% of the way to a cyborg, an idea that I found more than mildly arousing. Amy and I had met in high school, in a special ed classroom for kids with behavior disorders. Neither of us really belonged there. She was there because she had a bad reaction to pain medication and bit a teacher. I was there due to a misunderstanding. A bully kept fucking with me until I snapped and gouged out his eyes. You know how kids are. Our fairy tale romance began by us completely ignoring each other for five years, during which I only knew her by a crude nickname some asshole had given her. Then one day, John and I were asked as a favor to look into her disappearance. Wasn't a big deal, and it only took us a couple of days to get to the bottom of it. She had been kidnapped by monsters. Setting aside her tea, she said, So what's he like, the psychiatrist? It's just like you've seen in the movies, Amy. They get you talking and wait for you to announce you've had an epiphany. I thought for a moment, then said, And the therapist was a she, not a he. She's about 22, busty. She kept turning everything into some kind of sexual innuendo. Like, she said she believed therapy should be hands-on and grab my crotch. Then we porked on the desk for a while and the time was up. I shrugged. Like I said, it's just like in that movie, Anal Therapist 6. She sighed and sipped her tea. So I guess you don't miss me after all. Wait, were we not supposed to be having sex with each other with other people, Amy? I guess that was never made clear to me. Sorry. She didn't answer or laugh, and I said, Come on, you know if one of us wanted to sleep around, you'd have to a way easier time than I would. I'm the crazy guy who sees monsters and shoots delivery people. You're the adorable redhead. You could go down to the guy's floor of the dorm and say, I'm a woman, I want to have sex, and you'd have 20 guys lined up with roses and shit. I'd have to work at it. Why do you guys always say that? It's just as hard for a girl. That's ridiculous. Every bar is full of guys desperate to get laid and girls desperate to fend off all the horny guys. It's just the way it is. It's biology. It's easier for girls. That's actually impossible. Heterosexual sex takes one man and one woman. That means guys and girls have the exact same amount of sex. That means there are an equal number of sluts and desperate people on both sides. That can't be right. She shrugged. Do the math. And yes, just to settle the issue, I do miss you. I know. There's nobody here to ruin movies for me. Amy had a superhuman ability to pick out the one flaw in a movie that would make it impossible to ever fully enjoy it again. During a single weekend's George Lucas marathon, she pointed out to me that if Indiana Jones had just stayed home, Raiders of the Lost Ark would have turned out exactly the same way. The Nazis would have opened the Ark and gotten vaporized. Then, during The Empire Strikes Back, she paused the movie when a character referred to Luke's ship as an X-Wing, which is impossible, she said, because there's no way that ship should be called an X-Wing based on it being physically shaped like the English letter X, since an ancient race of people in a distant galaxy would never have seen that letter before. Jesus, I'm making her sound like a bitch. To the webcam window, I said, How are the classes going? Have you gotten to the part where they teach you to make computer viruses? Because I have people I want to send them to. If by virus you mean a program that accidentally freezes up your whole operating system when you try to execute it, then... I think everything I've coded so far counts as one. 
Oh, did you know you could hack the phone system with a Captain Crunch whistle? Uh, is that like a hacker slain or... No, the phones back in the 70s did everything by tones. The different frequencies and stuff told the system how to route the calls and all that. So there was a hacker named John Draper who figured out that the little plastic toy whistles they were putting in boxes of Captain Crunch had the exact same frequency and tone that the phone system was using to end charges on a call. He got free long distance for like two years just by blowing his toy whistle into the phone every time. Holy shit. I'm gonna try that. See, this is the type of stuff colleges should be teaching. Well, they've updated the phone system since then. Oh. We sat in silence for a moment. Then she said, Give me a second. I'm trying to think of a way to work the conversation back around to your therapy again. I said, I love you. She said, I know. Actually, tomorrow's a group session. I'll probably have to wax beforehand. Gross. Sorry. Though maybe I shouldn't talk since I'm sitting here on a webcam without any pants on. I said, oh really? Wanna see? Yes. Yes I do.